Good morning, my friends. My name is Ryan Freeman. Welcome to my life and welcome to another episode. Today's episode is My Neighbors, the Peacocks. I had a male peacock, beautiful blue feathered lad. He moved into the neighborhood about a year and a half ago. He was alone and he would sit on the rooftop every evening and just cry into the night sky every night. This went on for about two weeks and it was a very unusual sight. My neighborhood, we have sparrows and crows and occasionally hawks and a lot of hummingbirds, but we don't really have peacocks. This peacock just wandered into our neighborhood, flew into it, and decided he was going to stay. But he cried every night, crying out to nature for someone, something. And that someone joined him. It was a green feathered lass. So blue feathered man, peacock, and green feathered female peacock were together. After this man took the faith, moved into another neighborhood, cried out to the heavens for love, for someone to join him, and finally someone did. And they were a beautiful, handsome couple. All of the neighbors were very happy to see them. Uh, neighbors start to put out water dishes for them, uh, cat food, dog food, uh, seeds, whatever. And these peacocks were safe within our neighborhood. Um, and, you know, there's a couple neighbors who uh, were unhappy with them roosting on the top of their car. But for the most part, neighbors were always, I don't know, it added something to the neighborhood. And not only did it uh, add every add something to our personal joys inside, but it also allowed the neighbors to sort of talk to one another in a way that neighbors hadn't really done that so much previously. Um, you know, I don't know about what it's like in your neighborhood. Every neighborhood's slightly different. Um, in my neighborhood, some neighbors are friends and communicate, and some neighbors are uh, distant from one another and shy. Um, but in fact, actually, they do want to talk to you. Um, it just needs something or some event to cut the ice. And that's what these peacocks were. They helped us cut the ice between one another and also gave us a certain pride for our neighborhood. Well, uh, the female peacock disappeared not so long ago, about six months ago. And the male peacock was wandering alone. And I worried, along with some of the other neighbors, that perhaps she had left him. There was a divorce and he was alone. Um, but no, she was doing a function that many of her ancestors had done many times prior, which is the reason she was here. She was laying eggs. And uh, it was to our great joy and surprise when all of a sudden Mother Peacock was found walking with baby peacocks and with the proud father not far behind. Um, so this was another event that allowed our, my neighbors to sort of break the ice and I learned neighbors names that I had never known before. I uh, got to talk with a neighbor that I thought actually he disliked me. Uh, maybe he does, I don't know, but we had a very nice friendly chat, you know, because of this phenomenon that happened. Um, and so not only was were these peacock baby chicks a joy to their parents, obviously, um, but they were a joy to us neighbors as well. Now today I woke up this morning to a very funny sound, um, very high-pitched cry, and it was very near. And I, lo and behold, I go out into the backyard and I see a, the, one of the baby chicks in my backyard on a patio seat crying. It's alone. It pooped on the seat. Um, and it was scared. So I wanted to assist, you know, I've seen many videos out there where good kind Samaritans have assisted animals in need. So I was like, oh, here's my chance. But first let me grab my camera. <laughs> so I grab my camera and I go to help it. I open up my garage and a door. I'm going to try to shoo it out into the common area and then hopefully allow it to reunite with mother. Um, but my attempt did not go as planned. Instead, it was afraid of my uh, sort of shepherding and it flew. I didn't know baby peacocks could fly. Um, and it flew, uh, hit our awning, and then landed on a parasol of my neighbor's house.
Then I went outside and I saw that mother had answered the cry and it was just outside the gate where the baby peacock was laying, sitting on the parasol. So then I went back inside to shoo the baby peacock away, but it had heard mother's cry and was already reunited with her and papa and her only sibling. So that was a, that was a kind of a cool event this morning. Um, and I just want to some reflections about about my neighbors the peacocks uh you know this is just a very common phenomenon this isn't um as important to the world as trump or covid or biden or any of that kind of stuff but for me in my life uh the peacocks uh, <laughs> they're news they're news in my in my neighborhood and the things that they've taught me first of all the male flying in here being brave enough to come to a new land that takes balls to come to a new land courageously without anyone and then having the faith to cry every night for weeks to cry out to the heavens to cry out to nature bring me someone to love not going online and swiping left and swiping right all the floozies on that no i'm just joking i used to use tinder a long time ago but um in any case the peacock had the courage and the faith to come into a new land and cry to nature for love. And nature answered by sending a Mrs. Peacock, green feathered, beautiful lass. They're together. They're very happy. They bring joy to their neighbors. They, who knows who it could have gone different. You know, they could have got hit by a truck. They could have come into a neighborhood that had wild dogs, but they came to the right neighborhood. And uh, then, as nature took its course, they hatched new ones, new baby peacocks, the circle of life coming around and um, bringing more joy to their neighborhood. Now they're even in an elevated status. And there's hawks outside. There's hawks actually circling around, Cooper's hawks. But they're not, they're not, running in fear they're just doing their duty bravely and careful mother peacock has become a little more cautious but she's doing their duty they're living their life as peacocks they're still here they're still alive even with little problems baby peacock comes into my neighborhood and mother answers mother hears and they're reunited even without much of my help at all uh, so i didn't get to be one of those internet animal good samaritan heroes but but it was beautiful i love to see nature handle their its problems on its own sometimes i think us humans get a little too involved i think perhaps a little nice nudge but allowing nature to take its course in the best way is the best way in my opinion but i also want to just say i'm just sort of rambling off random thoughts uh today but uh I was talking to my wife because she was watching a TV show where this family had like seven bathrooms. And I said, babe, you know, we always envy people with bigger properties, bigger houses, but we seldom realize all of the cost that comes attached with that. Okay, you want a house with seven bathrooms? Well, that's seven toilets to clean. And even if you hire a maid to clean them, then you know, now you got to worry about paying the maid. You got to worry about scheduling. You got to worry about... Um, Lots of different things. Uh, you want a big lawn? Well, that's a lot of grass to cut. <laughs> um, one of my cousins is a homeowner, and I remember he was so proud to buy his home. But on Facebook, uh, and I'm sure he is very happy to, to own his house, but on Facebook, he's always complaining about all of these things. And he puts hashtag homeowner, and he's complaining about his water heater uh, breaking. He's worried about his uh, his trees falling out of the soil. He's There's all of these things that come attached with these wonderful things that we want. You want a, a hot rod or a race car? There's a lot of maintenance that goes into that. You want a supermodel wife? Well, you might be up at night worrying whether or not she's faithful. So, um, Sometimes we like to envy people who have more than us, but when I look at the peacocks, they're beautiful, but they haven't needed to go down to Madison Avenue. I don't know if it's Madison Avenue, but they didn't have to go to the department store to be beautiful. They're just beautiful themselves. And in fact, I think us humans are as well, if we allow our natural beauty to shine. They're simple. They don't really work 
for food. They don't work for water. They just live in the faith in their nature and the kindness of the people around them. And they have a very simple life. They don't have Netflix or Disney Plus or Amazon Prime, but they're very happy probably a little more peaceful and happy than most of us humans. Us humans are richer and and have more than any of our ancestors. I watched a video, it was on YouTube, it was Japan in 1919, so 100 years ago, and I showed my wife, who's Japanese, and it's like, wow, the way that Japanese people lived 100 years ago, goodness gracious, the hard work they were doing, the the, the poverty that they lived in, we have it so well, but are we happier? You know, mental illness, suicide, sort of despair and despondency. I don't necessarily think, you know, growing richer and progressing our society is actually doing much for our mental health. Um, that's just that's just my image. And on that note, um, when I look back at my childhood, our TVs were small. Our TVs were black and white. We only had one or two TVs. But I loved watching that TV more. I, I don't even like to watch TV today. The video games were simple graphics, but I enjoyed those video games more than any video games today. Um, we got to ride in the back of a truck. Sure, it was unsafe, but I love that. Uh, we went trick-or-treating, and we didn't have parent supervision. But I love that. It was the most fun. You know, life was poor and less safe before, but it was wonderful. And I believe that our progress that we're making in civilization, yeah, it comes along with cool things like virtual reality and all of that kind of stuff, but I don't think it's actually improving our lives in the actual felt presence of the moment. And I believe that I, we can all learn something from Mr. and Mrs. Peacock and their beautiful family. Um, anyways, this is just a rambling thoughts of mine. Uh, I sort of have a return to nature philosophy. I know that perhaps that's very impractical and rom and over romantic for a lot of people, um, but that that is how I feel. And I, when I look back in my life at all of the happiest times in my life, it was when I was living very simply. You know, just one pair of footwear, you know, a couple of shirts, um, and a small pack on my on my back. And so. I don't know what the answer is. We all have to make that choice. But I do believe that uh, we have brought all of this luxury and with the cost of destroying our environment, you know, destroying this earth because we all want more, more cars, new cars, new clothes, new everything, new, new, more batteries, more this, that, that, you know, and we're wealthier, but our mental illness is skyrocketing. It's crazy. We're not that healthy anymore. Um, and I and I think that perhaps a little return to simplicity, um, at least for me, and perhaps for our society, um, and our little passivity as well. You know, the peacocks just sort of saunter around. They're not well. They rush around when they have to, when they're when they're in danger. But uh, for the most part, life as a peacock's pretty nice, and life for humans can be pretty nice as well. So that's my spiel today like it love it whatever please click like and subscribe i will see you next time my name is ryan freeman bye